Even the inflated propagandistic Hamas numbers reveal a lower ratio of civilian deaths to combatants uh, than in other wars. And it actually speaks to Israel's huge efforts to avoid civilian casualties. These numbers come from an organization, excellent organization for U called UK Lawyers for uh, Israel. And uh, their analysis is extremely persuasive. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here with Editor-in-Chief Hugo Gurdon. And Hugo, the Israeli forces recently conducted a covert operation at the Jenin Hospital. And they still received criticism for doing that, even though this was seemingly an alternative to the conventional uses of force, as you have written about for the examiner that they are typically criticized about. Tell us what happened and why are they taking this criticism? Well, the, it, it's, a, it's an extraordinary case because it's very, it's very illuminating. Um, Israeli special forces dressed in civilian clothes, wearing dressed as both men and women, Muslim uh, uh, women with hijabs, etc. Uh, a dozen or more of them entered the hospital in Janine in the West Bank, uh, went to a room where they knew that three terrorists were in hiding, and uh, shot them dead. And the whole operation took 10 minutes. They were out of the hospital. There were no other casualties. No commandos were killed. No other civilians were injured, etc. It prompted outrage, and uh, Israel was accused of committing war crimes because it had gone into a hospital and also because the, the commandos were wearing civilian uniforms. But one needs to remember that uh, the Israelis are also condemned for using conventional military means. People talk about when they use missiles or bombs in built up areas, people say that they are completely unconcerned with uh, civilian casualties. They're even t accused of targeting civilian casualties. When they, t when they perform an operation which was clinically efficient and killed three terrorists and get out without hurting anybody else, they still receive uh, condemnation. So it, it, it makes it perfectly clear that the people who are condemning them, which is broadly speaking the left, are just outraged whenever they're successful, when they, when they, when they kill terrorists. I think the other thing to, to, to note about this is that in another way the left tries to have it both ways. It treats the hospital just as a hospital uh, when the Israelis attack, but it doesn't regard the hospital, but it isn't just a hospital when it's also a, a terrorist hideout. The rules for hospitals must change when the enemy is using it as a place to hide. Right, the, that Hamas was not allowing civilians to leave the parts of Gaza that Israel was, right. was targeting, that they have used sensitive civilian places like hospitals as operation spaces. You don't hear a lot of criticism from the left or even from you know, multilateral institutions like the UN of Hamas doing that. Why do they sort of get off with doing that when Israel's well, every because, move is criticized? Because uh, the, the whole ceasefire movement Mm -hmm. which, uh, which is based on the idea that there is indiscriminate slaughter by the Israelis, uh, civilians are being killed, and that the operation must cease because civilians are being killed. But that's, that is essentially a terrorist veto. Uh, if the terrorists hide behind civilians and the civilians get killed when Israel uh, goes after the terrorists, uh, and then the world uh, is up in arms about civilians being killed, it essentially says Hamas can go into Israel murder, rape, torture, kidnap 1,200 people, and then call for a ceasefire because, some, because Palestinians might get killed. Hamas puts out numbers of the death toll in Gaza. Obviously, they're not super reliable. Hamas is not to be trusted, but, but it's all we really have in terms of insight. Even if you took those numbers at face value, do they support a narrative of Israel committing war crimes and genocide? No, they abso absolutely don't. You're, ab you're, you're quite right that the numbers from Hamas are, of course, unreliable. The 30,000 or so that they say have been killed includes, for example, still the fictional fi 500 who were killed in the, uh, the, with the missile fired by Islamic Jihad, not by Israel, which hit a hospital car park. And I think that there were about 50 dead there, but it's still counted as 500 in uh, the Hamas numbers. Um, Hamas also makes no distinction between civilian numbers and its combatants. Now, if you take that 30,000 and you deduct from it the 9,000 uh, uh, 9, terrorists that Israel say it has killed, you get about a two to one ratio of civilians to, uh, to, to, to combatants. That's much better than the UN number globally in combat in situations of about nine to one civilians to, to, to combatants. 
And it's considerably better than the three to one to five to one that the United States uh, uh, found that, you know, admits to in Afghanistan and the Iraq wars. So even the inflated propagandistic Hamas numbers reveal a lower ratio of civilian deaths to combatants uh, than in other wars. And it actually speaks to Israel's huge efforts to avoid civilian casualties. These numbers come from an organization, excellent organization for U called UK Lawyers for uh, Israel. And uh, their analysis is extremely persuasive. Well, Hugo, thank you so much thank for you. being here today. You can get more reporting from Hugo and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.